Hi, welcome everybody. We are waiting for Tony to start the live. Uh, I will have to tell you that my English is not good, so please be patient. Uh, okay. Hi. Hey, Fagundo, how are you, my brother? How are you, my brother? Fine? Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> okay. The, thanks for joining us. Uh, all right, no problem. First of all, I would like to, to thank you the, the, for giving us the time to, to do this interview. It's very important to us. And I think this is the first time uh, we have an interview with you from Argentina, right? Yes, so this is uh, very important to me, too. It's uh, very exciting. Obviously, I love everybody. I love everyone in Argentina. So, <laughs> You have a lot of, of fans in the, in the live. Okay. Uh, tell us uh, about yourself, uh, Tony. Tell us uh, uh, what you... where are you born, where do you live? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Um, I live in Chicago uh, in the USA. Um, my mom, you know, she grew up uh, in the Philippines. Uh, she, uh, you know, uh, she grew up during World War II, during the uh, Japanese occupation of the Philippines. Um, she, you know, she she lived in a, you know, in a house very, uh, very different from the way that we live in America. You know, she got, you know, it's a very simple house. Uh, water was pumped out of a well, uh, you know, there's chickens, you know, running around in the yard and all of that good stuff. And, you know, the Japanese, you know, it was during World War II. And it, so it's a Japanese occupation of the Philippines. And she knew from, you know, from a very young age that she wanted more opportunity. Uh, she knew that uh, the opportunities for her were limited in the Philippines, especially at that time. And, you know, the, one of the ways to get out of the Philippines was to become a nurse. And so she became a nurse, you know, she went to nursing school and then she put out her application for different visas for different countries, uh, the United States, Germany, Vietnam, uh, all of these different countries. And it was the U United States uh, that accepted her first. And so she moved to the United States. Uh, my dad uh, also grew up in the Philippines, you know, also a young man during uh, uh, World War II. And he is like a, is like a survivor, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, like Peter, Peter Quill from Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, Star-Lord. Yeah. He's kind of like, you know, part of him is kind of like that. Always look, you know, or maybe Han Solo, somebody who's, you know, a, a survivor. Uh, you know, the, during the Japanese occupation. So uh, he worked as a, a translator, actually, for the Japanese uh, during World War II. But he also knew that there was more opportunity somewhere else. And then during the Korean War, it was very much, oh, if the, you know, a path to U.S. citizenship was if, you know, you joined the U.S. Navy or you joined the U.S. military uh, to, to fight the, uh, the North uh, Koreans during the, the Vietnam I mean, during the Korean War, that would make, that would make a path to U.S. citizenship uh, that much easier. So that's what he did. And he eventually made it to the United States. And my parents met here in Chicago. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's, so, that's um, yeah. So, you know, so the, they met here in Chicago. Uh, again, my dad was a, a really cool cat. Uh, he met my mom. Uh, you think I'm cool. My dad was actually really cool. <laughs> and my mom had no, no chance against him. But, you know, my, <laughs> my dad's all cool and suave. And obviously, you know, uh, they met, fell in love, got married, had a couple of kids. And now I'm talking to you uh, because of that. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, tell us uh, about uh, EKF, uh, your martial arts school. Oh, okay. So yeah, EK, uh, you know, um, EKF martial arts is uh, is my uh, is my gym. It's very much, in a way, kind of like the White Lotus Society. Okay, <laughs> you know how like Kung Lao, he was he trained in the Shaolin Temple. And then he eventually left the Shaolin Temple and wanted to train the next generation of 
of fighters. Uh, that's very much what ETF martial arts is. Um, I love Chinese martial arts. Um, you know, I love Kung Fu, Wushu, uh, the kickboxing aspect called Sanda. Uh, but I love all martial arts, uh, you know, because I always wanted to be Bruce Lee. And, you know, yeah. I remember, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, everybody wants to be Bruce that's, Lee. And that's, I saw, that's you know, Bruce Lee movie. Yes. Yes, so uh, he's very much my inspiration. And you know that Bruce Lee did Kung Fu, but he, he really believed that, you know, not just Kung Fu has the answer. There's answers, you know, uh, every martial art has something to offer, you know, whether it's a, a good fighting technique or a way to conduct yourself or anything, you know, there's always something to be gained from more knowledge. And anyway, so that's what EKF uh, martial arts represents to me. You know, we do Chinese martial arts, uh, yeah, but we also do boxing and Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and mixed martial arts. And I just try, you know, I try to um, give the next generation uh, the knowledge that I've uh, acquired and hopefully they'll give that knowledge plus their own knowledge to the next generation. And so that's uh, that's what we do. <laughs> that, yes, it's it's a great a great place to to train. I I saw a lot of people training in different uh, styles of martial arts. Yes. So and again, you know, there there's uh, martial arts and like learning how to punch, learning how to kick, doing all the uh, you know grappling and all of that good stuff. But it is very much you know what what I what I hope we do is create a community where, you know, everyone supports each other. We all try to make each other better and hopefully become better, better people, really. Uh, it's like and a, then like if, you a know, big family. Yes, yes, you know, because um, I think the world would be a lot better if we all were just, you know, yeah, we're one big family. Sometimes we get into fights. Sometimes we don't agree with each other, but ultimately we're all part of the same family. And ultimately we all have to, to love each other and that's the way that we're going to move forward. That's the spirit. Excellent. Uh, well, uh, now I want to ask you about Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, how did you get to be part of Mortal Kombat? How did you start? Oh, okay. So everybody knows, you know, like Dan, you know, uh, Danny and Rich and Carlos uh, were friends with John Tobias. This, this story has been told over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, but before that, like Danny and myself and Ho Sung uh, and Rich and Carlos and a couple other guys, you know, we were uh, friends before Mortal Kombat. We, we grew up together and we did martial arts together. And, you know, that, that, you know, there's a really special bond that came, you know, from doing martial arts together. Uh, so I've known Danny and Rich and Carlos and Ho Sung, uh, you know, for years and years and years before Mortal Kombat. Anyway, uh, Mortal Kombat happens. And then there's a couple of different stories that go through here. So some of these stories are myth and legend and some of these are true facts. So we have to figure out which one is which. <laughs> anyway. A different points of view. What's that? Yes, yes, from, from the point of view. Exactly, uh, from different points of view. Anyway, uh, Mortal Kombat happened, and, you know, uh, Danny's friends with uh, John Tobias, and they filmed Johnny Cage, they filmed, you know, Liu Kang and Raiden, and da 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 Okay, so here's one of those stories. Uh, and now it's time for them to film The Ninjas, okay? Uh and the day before they're going to film the ninjas, I'm in the gym, I'm, I'm working out, and it's very early in the morning, and I'm not really paying attention because I'm not awake yet, and I drop a weight on my toe, <laughs> and I break my foot, and it was no big deal, but like when you're filming uh, Mortal Kombat, uh, you know, uh, you have to do, be able to balance, you have to do everything slowly, you know, so they can get a, a very clean shot of like your punch or your kicks or whatever. And I couldn't balance at this point because, you know, my foot was broken. Uh, so I couldn't, uh, I didn't have the balance needed at that point. And so Danny went ahead and filmed um, the ninjas. And again, I think I would have done great as the ninjas or whatever, but let's face it, uh, Scorpion is 
the face of Mortal Kombat. And a lot of that comes from, you know, Danny. Danny, Danny did such a great job as, 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 a, as a ninja, plus Johnny Cage or whatever. And so who knows? Maybe, maybe Mortal Kombat wouldn't be as big as it is right now if I did the ninjas. So I'm super happy that Danny did the ninjas. And then, you know, so now you got, you got this big tidal wave, you know, Mortal Kombat is now exploding. You see, you know, it's growing and growing and growing and in the, in the arcades. And then a home version is coming out and there's so much activity going on for Mortal Kombat. And now they're getting ready to do Mortal Kombat 2. And, you know, Hosung is Liu Kang and Danny's Johnny Cage and all of this stuff. But they're looking to introduce another Shaolin Monk character, uh, a friend of uh, Liu Kang's. And John Tobias knew who I was or whatever. Uh, but this is another myth and legend thing. He didn't think that maybe I was right for the part, or at least this is what Danny was telling me. Danny thought, oh, maybe I'm too skinny for the part or whatever, whatever, whatever. And so it's like, you know what? Tell John Tobias, meet me in the gym, give me four weeks, let's see what happens, okay? And so for the next four weeks, it was, you know, very much just, a, you know, lifting and eating a lot and just trying to get as, as, as uh, in good a shape as possible, yes. So I could show John Tobias, look, I'm, I'm your man. I know that I could do this, uh, uh, this Shaolin Monk character because, you know, most of my life has been training in Chinese martial arts. So, uh, you know, anything that you want this character to do, I know that I can do this. And so Danny brings uh, John Tobias to, to the, to the uh, gym that we're working out at at the time. And, you know, I, I'm just so full of confidence. It's like, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. We're lifting, we're kicking, we're jumping, we're doing everything. And I showed John Tobias, you know, hey, <laughs> you want Kung Lao? Here's Kung Lao. Let's do this. Let's go for it. And, you know, then, you know, the, John Tobias seemed uh, impressed with what I was doing. I saw the, uh, the first sketches of Kung Lao after that. And it looked like, oh, that looks kind of like me. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know, you know, again, whether John Tobias had an idea in his mind beforehand or if I was able to influence him, but I wanted to take control of the situation. I didn't just want to wait. Oh, maybe he'll pick me. Maybe I'm too skinny. Maybe I'll just, you know, uh, it's not going to happen. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't happen, but give me a chance. Give me a chance to show you that I can make this happen. And John Tobias, you know, came up with a sketch. Like, oh, that looked like me. And after that, like, you know, whether it's uh, the Mortal Kombat Conquest or uh, Mortal Kombat, on, you know, the, uh, the online series or the new guy, we all kind of look the same now. So, so, you know, Kong Lao is Kong Lao because... Because this is what Kung Lao looks like. And so it was so exciting. It was so exciting because, you know, when they were doing Mortal Kombat, the, the first game, it was, nobody knew what was going to happen. You know, it, 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 it was a small game, da 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 But by Mortal Kombat 2, everybody knew that this is something special. And to be able to, you know, to be, uh, to be able to join something that, that's this special is just a, a very humbling experience. I'm so grateful for it. And yeah, so that was just, you know, really, really, you know, being part of Mortal Kombat is a, is a life changing experience. So, so I'm so, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that people, uh, you know, that people still want to listen about this, that I'm maybe able to talk to, you know, people in Argentina or wherever that, you know, because we all have the same love for Mortal Kombat. So I love it. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, how was the process of creating Kung Lao? Oh, okay, so, you know, I saw the sketches or whatever, and I don't, you know, you, you've, everybody has seen, seen the, uh, you know, the, the behind the uh, scenes footage or whatever. Yeah, and, you know, like the costume, like, like when you go to, when you go to like, uh, you know, conventions or whatever, you see the incredible cosplay right? The costumes, everyone's cosplay looks so great. Uh, you know, I am so blown away by a lot. But, but like the original Mortal Kombat costumes, they're garbage. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> I didn't yeah. expect that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look at you know, you go across, you know, uh you know, you post stuff, uh a Mortal Kombat collector post stuff. Everybody, you know, everybody who posts these cosplay they're incredible. <laughs> But like the Kong Lao, like the original Kong Lao thing, like the 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 arm bracers, they were little, they were almost like, you know, you take some aluminum foil. Okay, here's your arm bracers. <laughs> you know the 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 way the the costume was sewn together, it was it was garbage. Let me just tell you right now. But I'm standing there and you know, I'm in front of the the blue screen now. The cameras are going and it is it's something that you realize, wow, I I get to join part of the the Mortal Kombat mythos. I, you know, I I get to do this. I'm so blown away. And then John Tobias, you know, he talks about, oh, you know, we want the uh, Kung Lao to have like wind type movements. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, 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 what are wind type movements? You know, because uh, so it took me a second there. And then I realized, oh, you know, okay, so he wants wind type movements. And the, the kind of martial arts that I was training at the time, uh, you know, very uh, heavily uh, at that time was competitive wushu. And the, the particular style is called long fist. And that is very much where, uh, you know, uh, the energy comes from the center of the body. And, uh, you know, then the, it starts at the center of the body and comes out through the extremity. So you're moving almost like a propeller or something like that, or like like you could if you can imagine like a, a reverse windmill, okay? So the, you know that's that's what it is. It's like so then I start thinking, oh, propeller, windmill, wind type movement. I got it. This is the style that Kung Lao is going to you know. It's like a Shaolin style. It's long fist. It's Chinese martial art. This is what John Tobias was looking for, and so. Okay, I get it. This is this is this is Kung Lao style, and you know there were you know I'm pu I'm putting on the costume or whatever, and you're still thinking, okay, you know, yeah, I'm I'm you know I get to do this, I get to do this, I'm gonna be you know part of the Mortal Kombat mythos or whatever, but you need there's something special about being part of this and you know like Danny Johnny Cage you know there's a, he's he's that arrogant actor or you know uh uh Ho Sung you know he the he is Bruce Lee or you know Kano he is very much you know a mercenary he, he, he'll, yes <laughs> so all of these things so Kung Lao has to be something too And like, you know, so I can't just be, yay, I'm, uh, I'm Kung Lao, yay. And so I'm trying to figure out what, what, what Kung Lao is. And I got the costume on or whatever. And then I get the hat. And they hand me the hat. And then you that's, when, the that's hat. when it dawned on me. Yes, you know, <laughs> you put on the hat. Oh, my God. I'm Clint Eastwood. I am a cowboy. I am, <laughs> I am the man with no name. I'm, don't, you know, don't play around. I don't say too much. If I say something, it's either going to be very important or very sarcastic. But this is who Kong Lao is. You know, maybe, maybe Liu Kang is the guy who's full of hope and all of that stuff. But Kong Lao, he's, he's the silent badass. Don't, don't mess with Kong Lao or you know, this is what you're going to get. And so that, that was that process that, that, yes, you put on the hat and you're no longer Anthony Marquez, you're Kung Lao. You are Kung <laughs> <And> so, Lao. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for answering all these questions. Uh, we have some more. Uh, now I have to ask about Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, when Daniel, Philip, Catalin, and Honsu Park left Mortal Kombat, Why did you, you choose to stay in Midway? Okay, so this is, this is a, a good, a very good question. And, uh, you know, we don't talk about this one so much. But from my point of view, you know, the, we, again, me, Danny, Hosung, Kat, you know, overall, especially me, Danny, uh, Hosung, and, you know, uh, Rich and Carlos. That, that was one group that we grew up together. And then, you know, I had met Catalin before. I had met uh, Philip before. But 25 years ago, we weren't as close as we are now, obviously, you know. Um, you are the closest but, group, group. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you can't be involved in this stuff. And, you know, obviously I have respect for them as martial artists and everything like that. But, yeah, we, over 25 years, we get to interact more. Philip is like, you know, Philip is, you know, is like my brother. He, he supports me, you know, every time we do a concert, we're here to support. Uh, you know, I, he, he's great. And Catelyn, too. Catelyn, you know, is a great representative of, of martial arts, especially here in Chicago. She runs, a, a, you know, a great gym. Uh, there's nothing but, you know, love and respect that I have for those guys. But 25 years ago, we weren't as close. But I was very much, you know, very close to Danny, Hosung, Rich, and Carlos. Anyway, <laughs> so, okay. So, like I said, you know, uh, there's the first Mortal Kombat. And, you know, obviously, Ed Boon had a lot to do with, you know, the... Uh, success of Mortal Kombat. Uh, John Tobias had, you know, so much to do for the success of Mortal Kombat. Um, you know, it was essentially John Tobias's ideas. Uh, it was his concept, his artwork, all of everything that is Mortal Kombat is, you know, John Tobias's idea. But without the, the gameplay, the programming, you know, you could have these great ideas. And, you know, if it doesn't play, if the game doesn't play well, you don't have anything but a great idea. So, you know, obviously those two guys have so much to do with Mortal Kombat. But, you know, you take a game like something like Pit Fighter. I always like to talk about Pit Fighter because it was, uh, you know, uh, the same type of technology type game. You know, you green screened actors. It's a, a fighting game or whatever. But I'm sorry, nobody is talking about Pit Fighter 30 years later. We're not celebrating Pit Fighter, you know, 30 years later, you know, or anything, you know, like Karate Champ or Yi Ar Kung Fu, all of those fighting games beforehand, you know, they're great, I get it, but, but Mortal Kombat is something special. And it is a very much, you know, I believe that, you know, like all of these elements have to be put together. You know, you need John Tobias, you need Ed Boon, you need Danny Pacina to, you know, uh, uh, he helped, you know, uh, with the, oh, tone, you know, you, you should punch this way or maybe you should kick this way. He was the one who actually introduced me to John Tobias. If with, without Danny Pacina, Ho Sung wouldn't have been in the game. Uh, I wouldn't be in the game. Liz Malecki, all of the, everybody, nobody would be in the game. Danny brought all of that. And there's something very special. I don't know what it is, you know, but there's some special ingredient. There's that, you know, that lightning in a bottle that everyone captured. Be, and a special combination, be, I think. Yes, a special combination of artists, programmers, talent that, 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 that you can't recapture. And that's why we're still talking about this stuff 30 years later. Anyway, so, you know, so, so that's why I believe all of those things are, are important, okay? Um, and then afterwards, you know, so now Mortal Kombat 2 is going on, and, you know, you hear about all of the, the, the things that are going on behind the scenes. Maybe, you know, uh, they originally signed a contract where only... 200 games were supposed to be uh, produced, but now it's like blowing up all over, uh, you know, the, the home gaming system. So many more arcade games are being produced. And, it, you know, it's no longer just this, oh, maybe it's going to be a cool game, maybe not. Now it's a global ph phenomenon by, by Mortal Kombat 2. There's just no getting around it. And, you know, again, uh, especially uh, like Danny, you know, Danny and Hosung, and I think especially Danny, though, but he and Ho Sung also, because uh, Ho Sung was a, a you know, he was known before Mortal Kombat. He was a national champion. Uh, he'd done the Jackie Chan movie, you know, all of these type of things. So, you know, they believe that they they deserve more than what they were getting for for the game. And I totally get that, you know, um, and that, you know, for the court city side, all of that stuff. But by the time that I signed on, obviously, I knew that it was going to be a, a global phenomenon. I knew that, um, you know, uh, it's going to the home systems and all of these type of things. And, 
you know, they had already established how, how, you know, the low kick is like this, the high punch is like this. All of these things were already established by the time I jumped into Mortal Kombat. And so when, when Danny and Hosung decided to, you know, uh, do their own thing when they wanted to separate and, you know, uh, try to get, you know, uh, what they perceive as, you know, their fair share, which is totally fine. Uh, you know, they want to do that. But I knew that I was essentially a hired gun at that point. You know, uh, I didn't uh, come up with any of the, like the real creativity or anything like that, you know, outside of like the Kong Lao type stuff, but I didn't help them mold the game. I did, you know, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was uh, competing uh, at the time or whatever, but I wasn't like at the, you know, uh, the level of Ho Sung, you know, Ho Sung was already a national champion and all of this stuff. And so legally I didn't have uh, a strong footing. It's like, okay, I could either try to, uh, you know, uh, sue them or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever that case may be, or I can, you know, uh, sign on and just take my chances this way. And yeah, that created, a, you know, some conflict between us at the time. But more important than that, you know, we're brothers before this game. And no matter what's going to happen, we all knew we're going to be brothers after this game. And maybe we'll get into fights. Maybe we won't be so happy with each other. But, you know, Danny, Danny will still put his financial well-being before me. You know this. Danny, Danny is just a, a great guy who, you know, he doesn't care. He, if you're his guy, he loves you, and that's what it is. Same thing with Ho Sung, same thing with Carlos and everybody else. And so we all had to make that decision. Do we sign on or do we? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry. The, the connection was lost for a second. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, but Dan, like, I, I truly believe that Danny had a, had a case. Okay. You know what? You, you helped develop Mortal Kombat. Great. Ho Sung has a case or whatever. Um, I didn't feel like I, at the time I had a case to, oh, I want more because I knew what I was signing into already. And so, you know, uh, myself, like Rich or whatever, we decided, okay, we're going to continue with the Mortal Kombat franchise. Uh, willing, you know, Danny gets what he deserves. Uh, Hosung gets what he deserves. All of that stuff. Uh, but these are the, the choices that we made. And, you know, 30 years later, it doesn't matter what's going on with Mortal Kombat. I could, you know, if if I'm feeling bad, I'll call up Danny, and you know, Danny, like, come on, bro, let's go for a drink. You know, I could, you know, I could call up Ho Song and like, you know, like the last time we were together, Ho Song's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. That's so, 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 but that's a, that's why I decided uh, to, uh, you know, to to sign up to continue my contract with Mortal Kombat. And yeah, again, because I knew what I was getting into at the time. Uh, Danny brought so much to, to the game. Uh, Ho Sung was a known quantity at the time. At the time, you know, I didn't have a, really a leg to stand on. Uh, am I happy with the deals? Obviously not. Or, you know, it could be better. But do I love being associated with Mortal Kombat? Obviously. So, so there you go. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for, for sharing with us this this information. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, yeah, but I can't okay. I can't stress that enough. That uh, you know, back then I didn't know Philip and Catalin that well. Okay, but now are you kidding me, man? They're great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, let me let me see. Do you do you have any uh, original costume of Kun Lao? Oh my. Okay. So I've moved a couple of times since uh, uh, since we filmed Kung Lao uh, and Mortal Kombat, and I used to have both the original costumes. But again, like I, like I, like I'm telling you, and the garbage, 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 garbage. But but what I do have. This thing, this thing of beauty. <laughs> Whoa. The uh, the original hat. The original hat, nice. Yes. 
it's amazing. So, yes, the, have, and even, go ahead. Do you have more than one hat? Okay, so this is the original hat. Uh, the blade, uh, like you'll see in some of the, like originally, you'll see some of the uh, pictures and videos. The, the blade itself was very much just like tin foil, you know, aluminum foil that wrapped around the edge. It was a piece of garbage, but I'm, it's mine and I'm Kung Lao, so I don't fucking care. <laughs> okay. And, and then, you know, we started doing like those trade shows like E3 and, you know, all those trade shows during that time period where we have to be in costume uh, promoting Mortal Kombat. So then they upgraded the blade and they put this, uh, uh, you know, this type of blade. I don't know if you can see this. This kind of blade on uh on the hat so that was uh updated and you can okay. see there's a there's a little chip here uh in the original blade because i would roll up into you know would go would be going wherever we're going for the for the conventions or the trade shows or the appearances or whatever and a lot of times i'd roll up into the hotel and I'd be just throwing the hat around because because I'm Kung Lao. Yes. Because you're and I, with your hat. Yes. And then at one hotel, I, I like ding the I ding the hat. So you know this one's the this is the this is all be the original one because there's a a ding in the hat. Okay. But that's, yeah. That's but this is the. This is the original hat, uh, but then, uh, you know, uh, a couple of cosplayers, uh, like, you know, well-known cosplayers made uh, another hat for me, but then IFX Studio, uh, this studio, uh, you know, he worked on, like, Captain Marvel, he worked on The, the Mandalorian, he worked on Iron Man, uh, this studio, IFX Studio, hang on. made me the new hat so this thing this i love how i love this hat uh you know it, you know look the, the, the same type of uh painting on the hat is the same type of uh, i think this is from the uh they use the same paint from uh iron man so the when they painted the armor the, this is from the same paint thing that they used for iron man so i love this hat this thing this thing is much better than the original but it's, you know, sometimes I'll take this out with me, but, you know, so this is a much higher quality hat. It's amazing. But this one, this is the original hat. This is the one yeah. that, yes, that, you know, like all the collectors, they want this hat. And they want this. <laughs> Yes, they want this hat. And, you know, you, you, uh, you know there, there are a couple of collectors who... Quite honestly, it. would would want to pay, yeah, a lot of money for the hat, but no, it's it, you know this is that's the hat that changed my life. That's the hat that gives me the opportunity to talk to everybody, and so that is always going to be my hat. <laughs> Your hat is unique. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, okay. What was your best memory from Mortal Kombat Three? Oh, <laughs> okay. So from Mortal Kombat 3, there, here's a good one. Um, we were at E3, uh, and there's footage of, of this one. It's me, Carrie, and uh, John Parrish, okay? We're, we're doing the, the E3 uh, Mortal Kombat show for, for Midway. Uh, but I swear to God, this one was like, you, you ever watch like TV shows like when they're having uh, uh, special TV shows where like the whole cast somehow ends up at a, at, a, at a new location and, you know, they have some sort of story where, you know, like the, uh, like the whole cast goes to a different location or like sometimes they bring in uh, like a special guest star like on Friends when they brought in Brad Pitt, you know, for the, for the Thanksgiving Day special or whatever. For that show, uh, the E3 show uh, uh, during Mortal Kombat 3, it was me, uh, Kerry Hoskins, and uh, John Parrish. Mm -hmm. But and so we're we're uh, we're on we're all in LA at the time, 
And so, uh, you know, we get to, you know, it was held at the LA Convention Center. Uh, we stayed at the Beverly Hilton. The Beverly Hilton is the hotel that they hold like the Grammy, I mean, the, the Golden Globe Awards at. Uh, there's so many celebrities staying at the, the Beverly Hilton at the time. And then there's a game that, you know, from, for the Sega Genesis, the Thea, Thea Realm Fighters. Okay. Yeah, and, and yeah, and Danny was working on that. Hosung was working on that. Catalin was working on that. Philip, uh, Philip was working on that. So they were also at E3. Okay. And then some of my other friends, like my, some of my other Kung Fu brothers also worked in the video game industry. So they were at this uh, event also. And so there's just all of us in LA, you know, uh, staying at the Beverly Hilton, doing the show at the uh, LA Convention Center. And, you know, they're over there doing Thea Realm Fighters. We're over here doing MK3. Uh, you know, some of my other friends were working for Jalico at the time. And it was just so, so much fun. I have a whole lot of idols like, uh, you know, like Bruce Lee, like Muhammad Ali, okay? Muhammad Ali was, uh, was uh, you know, I look up to Muhammad Ali so much. And he was there. He was at the, at the Beverly Hilton. And he was just, uh, you know, I saw him in the, in the lobby. He was just sitting in the lobby. Like, oh, my God, I get to say hi to Muhammad Ali. And... <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, uh, at the time, uh, our vice president, uh, Al Gore, was uh, doing a fundraiser at the Beverly Hilton. And I saw him, uh, you know, at the Beverly Hilton. He's surrounded by security and all of this stuff. And there's a story about that that's in my book that I'm going to stop there. And then you guys have to buy the book in order to hear the story about Mortal Kombat Vice President Gore and uh, uh, Joe Lieberman. So all of these guys are what's the heavy name political. Of what's the name what's of that? your book? What's the name uh, the, of your book? The working title right now is Kung Fu Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, it makes sense. <laughs> then. Yes, so, you know, the, the book is just a, a memoir uh, about, you know, uh, you know, life lessons, Mortal Kombat, me, Danny, Hosung, Rich, and Carlos, before Mortal Kombat, when we were kids, what we were doing as kids, hopefully you guys, uh, you know, enjoy that type of stuff, how, you know, the rivalry that we had, you know, because we, we all joined uh, the same Kung Fu school, and we, we all love each other, I can't stress that enough, but don't tell me that at every, at every training session, every competition, I wanted to beat Danny. Danny wanted to beat Hosung. Hosung wanted to beat me. We owe every day. I'm going to beat this guy. Every day. Danny's looking to beat me. Every day. Hosung's looking to beat, you know, Danny or however it works out. <laughs> but, you know, so there's that, that Kung Fu rivalry. <laughs> every day. Fighting. Doing everything. <laughs> but at the end of the day, and then we, you know, we're done training, and then we go, you know, we go eat pizza, we go watch movies, we go watch, you know, uh, music videos, we all break dance, all of that type of stuff, stories like that. And A brother just, food. Yeah. <laughs> and just, uh, you know, the, uh, the message of never giving up and following your dreams and just having a, you know, enjoying the process of following your dreams and not, you know, not getting caught up in, you know, there's so many great people like Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, all of these guys, Colin Powell. I don't care who it is. They're great people. You know, I don't consider myself a great person, but I have these idols that, you know, I follow and I try to pattern myself after that. And, you know, because of that, I'm not Bruce Lee, but I happen to be Kung Lao. And, Kung Lao, Lao. you know... <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, things like that. The stories are revolve around that. So that's what the book is about. <laughs> okay. Definitely. I will buy the, this book. Uh, ah, thank you. All... <laughs> okay. Uh, go on. Uh, in ah, Mortal Kombat but... Mythology, Sub Zero, uh, how was your experience in this game? Uh, what can you tell us about, you, about your role as Fujin in this game? Uh, okay, here, let me talk about something else real quick. Okay, so in okay. Mortal Kombat Mythology, you know, I was Fujin, but I was also a uh, Shaolin monk. 
Okay, uh, Rich and I were played uh, Shaolin monks also in mythology. Okay? okay, and Rich, Rich is bald, so he doesn't have to do anything, right? You need a bald Shaolin monk or whatever. But they put uh, a skull cap, a bald, you know, a bald skull cap on me, and I posted one of these pictures. On, on my Instagram page, if you guys just look for that, I'm bald, and that was from Mortal Kombat Mythology, okay? Oh, and right. at about, yeah, so, and at about the same time, you know, so they put on the ball cap, and I'm doing whatever I do, um, and, you know, um, at about the same time, uh, the first uh, Mission Impossible movie, and, yeah, are you familiar with, uh, you know, Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise movies? Uh-oh. Hello? 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we good? Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Can you hear me? I hear you. Fine. Okay. Okay. So, you know, like in uh, Mission Impossible, like the, the Tom Cruise movie, they're always like pulling off their masks, you know. And, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's the bad guy. No, it's Tom Cruise. You know, they're, they're always doing this type of stuff, right? Right. And Seems so I have, the, I have the skull cap on. And it, it's like Mission Impossible, you know. Like they glue it on and it looks, it looks real. You know, the, you can see the picture looks real or whatever. And you know, uh, after the last day of uh, filming, I didn't want them to take it off because I wanted to, uh, to play around. I, I went to the gym it's like, oh, look, I'm bald, ha, 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 all of this stuff. And then at the end of the day, you know, because I watched Mission Impossible, I thought this is going to be like this. So I go and I wanted to tear it off, but the glue stuck and like I tore off a big chunk of skin in the back of my head. <laughs> yeah. And I was so mad because and the, for, for the longest time, I didn't like the Mission Impossible movies. Because I thought, oh, I could just be like Tom Cruise and tear off this thing and, <laughs> and I'll be somebody else. I go and tear it off and like a big chunk of skin rips off the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing. <laughs> but I really enjoyed that. Uh, what I, but one of the things that I, that I regret is that especially, you know, Danny, you know, if you know Danny, Danny always has a camera around. He's always taking pictures. He's always doing all of those type of things. And Danny wasn't around for mythology. So there are no real pictures of like Rich and I being the Shaolin monks or me as Fujin. And I'm a big fan of Thor, right? So I love okay. Thor. And so, you know, uh, uh, Tobias says, oh, you get to play Fujin. He's like a, a wind god and all of this stuff. And, you know, I got the red cape and, uh, and, the, and the, the, the breastplate that kind of looks like Thor. So I'm really happy about that. But at the end of the day, I'm not Fujin. I'm not a wind god, okay? So this is very much something just like, you know, as an actor or work for hire, as opposed to being like Kung Lao. Kung Lao is a Shaolin monk, you know, uh, he trained in Chinese martial arts, he's teaching the next generation. This is very much something that I, I feel connected to, you know. I, I really like that Kung, you know, Kung Lao and, and me are, are, are bound together always. Me being a wind god, that's not exactly who I am. <laughs> that's not your type. Yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe, you, you know who, like Carlos, Carlos is, he's Raiden, and so, you know, Carlos is, you know, is, is, isn't a god either, but Raiden, behind the scenes, still controls a lot of what happens in Mortal Kombat, correct? And Carlos, correct. behind the scenes, still works on Mortal Kombat, he chooses what actors come in, he does a lot of the artwork, he still actually controls a lot of Mortal Kombat. So in a, in a way, Carlos is Raiden. In a lot of ways, yeah, because he controls Mortal Kombat. You know, there's, there's him that actually controls Mortal Kombat. So he is very much Raiden. And same thing, like, Rich is very much Kano. Uh, Danny is very much Johnny Cage. And, uh, you know, Ho Sung is very much Liu Kang. Yeah. So, and, and I'm very much Kung Lao. As, as far as uh, Fujin, eh. <laughs> but I do regret not having any pictures of of, uh, of me being Fujin. Same. Yes. <laughs> nobody, nobody takes nobody takes pictures. 
No, I maybe uh, you know I haven't talked to I talked to Tobias a couple of months ago, and so I should I'll give him a call again. But if anybody has pictures, maybe John Tobias has pictures, or maybe Ed Boone has pictures. Ed Boone wasn't much uh, to take pictures either, but maybe John Tobias has some pictures or whatever. But yeah. Okay. But it was really damn. Okay. That's why you see so many pictures from Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Two because Danny was involved, and there's he's always taking pictures. <laughs> yes, he's always and take a film in Mortal Kombat One. He yeah. films a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go on. You also work on the game Revolution X. Uh, yes. Can you tell us about your work on this game? Ah, oh, that was that was cool too. So you know, I'm I'm a ninja. <laughs> I, I I always play ninjas. I don't know why. <laughs> ninja, Ninja Turtle, Because whatever. You're a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> But common Russell, you are a, 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 a common Russell. You are a, a rock good. Oh, <laughs> what did he say? Common said that you are a rock good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh, so like um, I get to play in Revolution X. I get the I'm a ninja that kind of looks like a Power Ranger. It's like a red and yellow ninja suit or whatever. <laughs> um, so that was cool. And I think we we actually filmed this one uh, midway at the time had uh, a studio again uh, in California somewhere. So you know, they flew me out to California, and I got to shoot this. Uh, also, they did some of shooting here in Chicago and some in um, uh, California, I believe. But anyway, uh, that was a lot of fun. But ah, oh, I, I, this is one of those things that in life that you know sometimes you just regret. <laughs> So it's an Aerosmith game, you know, and Steven Tyler uh, is in the game or whatever. And you know, me being, oh, you know, you're a professional, so you know, you can't hang around. You know, you're not looking to hang around the set or ask for autographs because you know, sure, Steven Tyler is Aerosmith, but I'm also a professional, so I got to be cool. I got to be cool. I'm not gonna hang around, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, but Liv Tyler. Also showed up during filming, and this was her as a little kid, you know, before Lord of the Rings or all of that stuff. And you know, I I'm a big fan of hers, especially during that Lord of the Rings time period or whatever. Uh, and I I regret not meeting Liv Tyler because <laughs> that would have been easy to meet right there. Like yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm coming. Wow, never, <laughs> you're gonna never never too late. Maybe you can connect with her. Yeah, man, maybe. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You know, uh, hopefully the stars align at some point where we're in the same room and I get, yeah, you know, I did this game with your dad. Da 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 da. How you doing? <laughs> How are you doing, babe? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's okay. the biggest regret that I have about Revolution X. Not hanging around. You know, to meet Liv Tyler. <laughs> okay, maybe the, the next time. Next time. <laughs> next time. Okay, let's talk about uh, about Kung Fu Rockstar. Uh, I also said my favorite Chicago experience was definitely being able to see your band, and I want to thank you because you give me the chance to share stage with you and the band at the after party. Ah, so, thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. So I would like to ask some questions about music. Uh, I I want to know if if you if, do you play or would you like to learn to play a musical instrument? Sure. Uh, what I, obviously what I do, you know, I'm the front man of the band. Um, I like to sing. Um, I like to entertain. But in terms of musical instrument, you know, sometimes uh, before I would play a little bit of the keyboard. Uh, But it's not something that drives me. Uh, I, you know, I, I would like, you know, if God said, "You want, you want one gift that I'll give you, you could play, play the keyboard." I will take that. But you know, it's not something that I, I truly 
want to work at or you know, or else I would be doing it. But uh, to play the keyboard would be cool. I play it a little bit, but you know, I have a much better keyboard player right now in the band, uh, uh, Diva Cat, who is a much better uh, keyboard player than me, so let her play the keyboard. Uh, okay. Anyway, you know, what, okay, I, what, I, what I, yeah, but what I, what I like to do, I like to use my strengths, you know, which is hopefully entertaining people, hopefully, you know, a little bit of singing, hopefully some martial arts, some dancing. I like to be in the front, entertaining everyone uh <laughs> show. yes you know because ultimately that's what you know you could go to you, you know maybe you go see christina aguilera maybe you go see adele you know they're you know or freddie mercury anybody you know there there's so many great singers i'm not even the best singer in my band you know but but what when you come to a kung lao show you know it's 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 about the show it's, it's about entertainment Yes, let's just have some fun. Let you know, we're gonna sing, we're gonna dance, we're gonna do some martial arts, we're gonna drink, we're gonna all have some fun, and that's 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 where I'm strongest. And so let's do that. I got some other guys who you know sing great. Got some other guys who play the instruments great. Got guys like Fagundo I could bring on. Come on, you can play a guitar. Get the, get in there, <laughs> and let's put on a show. Let's make everyone feel good. <laughs> and that's what yeah. I love doing. <laughs> I love to that it's a, a complete show in yeah. in all. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, tell uh, how long have you been singing uh, and playing with the band? Okay, so how long have I been singing? There's a there's a uh, one of those um, um, Mortal Kombat uh, magazines. And, you know, it, it has me in the picture like this and uh, this picture here. And it asks, oh, what, uh, what, something like, something to the effect of, what don't people know about you? And I write in there, oh, I'm a killer singer. And this is like, you know, 25 years ago. But at that point, what I like to do, I like to go drinking and go to karaoke bars. <laughs> I like drinking and just singing and having a good time. <laughs> I'm actually more like Johnny Cage, and Danny is actually more like Kung Lao, <laughs> but we'll get into that <laughs> later. <laughs> okay. But you know okay. me. I'm always looking for a good time. I'm always looking to <laughs> put on a show. Uh, You're funny. <laughs> but after, okay, so, you know, uh, you know, I competed in martial arts. I was doing martial arts, uh, you know, did well in martial arts, and I love being in front of people. I love entertaining and, you know, having that rush, that adrenaline where, you know, you're in front of people and you got to put on a show. And then after, after competition, you know, obviously I can't compete anymore. You know, I'm older. I, I'm no longer competing. And so that goes away. But I still like to be, I still like the rush, the rush of, of being in front of a crowd. So what does that mean? That means, you know what? I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> it, it, was just, yeah, it was very Definitely. simple. Like, <laughs> and so about five years ago, you know, okay, I want to be a rock star. Uh, so I'm going to sign up at the School of Rock. The School of Rock is a, a place where, you know, you can learn how to sing, play instruments, and all of that good stuff. Uh, just like the Jack Black movie. Jack Black did a movie, School Thank of Rock. Anyway, it's, yes, it was exactly that. So I sign up at the School of Rock, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'll just be a, a you know, singer because I love doing that. But then after a while, so this is about five years ago or whatever, after about a little bit of that, oh, they have, you know, School of Rock, I could join a band and play, you know, play in clubs. Uh, definitely I'm doing that. And then so I joined that band, and then after a while, it's like, you know, I'm, I would like to maybe write my own music. I would like to uh, have more control. I would like to do a Kung Lao show. A Kung Lao <laughs> so show, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to make my own band. And the, so that's what happened. And it was just very much just one day. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be a rock star. I, I, know, yeah, I, I know I can entertain people. I know that, you know, it's going to be rough. I, I know it could get better. And... I know we can put on a show and make people happy, and so that's what happened. <laughs> okay, that you know how to be fun. I yes, I, yes, and you know, yes, you know, I you know, hopefully we could have fun. Hopefully, you know, I I believe that you know I 
Anybody could do, anybody could get better when they do the work. You do the work, you get better, you have fun, you love the process, and now it started from me just talking. Yeah, I'm a great singer, I'm a great singer, I'm a great singer, to, oh, you know what, I want to form a band. I want, I want, I want to be Kung Lao. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have one, you know, you put, then, you know, you fast forward and you have a CD, you, you know, you have people around the world, you know, from Argentina, Brazil, Thailand, Russia, they all hear your music. It's like, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, for giving me this opportunity. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> that, thanks for sharing with us. Uh, Tony, we need to, to shoot down uh, for one second the, the live when we start uh, again, okay? Okay, okay.